so I'll, uh, I'll get right to it. Um, I did distribute to um, some folks, I think the Zoning Board of Appeals has seen it, maybe others, but the, my, my, yeah, my topic is on ex parte communications. I just want to make sure everybody's aware. There's, there's kind of a handy, it's about a three page article on the MSU extension website about ex parte. I think it's worth reading, it's a pretty quick read. So, what are ex parte communications? That's one of those fancy Latin words that uh, legal pundits like to use. It just means hearing from, from one side only. And it's typically something that we, we, we want to avoid. Um, and when I'm talking about ex parte communications, I'm not talking about you know, dealing so much with each other and with staff and with employees. I mean, those are all folks you're supposed to be talking to. But I'm talking about when you are in your position as a board or commission member, but you are having communications uh, with, with applicants, perhaps with neighbors, perhaps with residents outside of a meeting. Those are the kind of ex parte communications I want to talk to you about. And as a general rule, they're to be avoided. Now having said that, it sounds pretty undemocratic, doesn't it? Because you'd like to think that, that you should be freely accessible and should be able to have these communications both both initiated by you as well as received by you. But in many respects, when we are sitting on boards and commissions, or even as the city council, we're making decisions and we're sitting, in many cases, in an administrative or quasi-judicial role. I mean, just picture for a moment if you're a, a litigant in a lawsuit and you you come to find, uh, you, you, you know, you hear that the, you know, the judge had lunch and was discussing your, your case with the other side or with somebody else. I mean, you're immediately, immediately going to question the objectivity, the neutrality, the impartiality of that judge. You're in the same position. I would say the Zoning Board of Appeals, almost everything the Zoning Board of Appeals does, they are serving in a quasi-judicial role like a judge would. Much of what the Planning Commission does when you're approving site plans, you're looking at various land use approvals, special land uses, that sort of thing. You are in an administrative quasi-judicial role. Many of the things the City Council does as well, although I'll, I'll come back to that. So it's important to try to maintain that, that separation for a number of reasons. Primarily, maintain your impartiality, your objectivity. There's potential Open Meetings Act violations, depending how it plays out. But the most important thing is when we make decisions as a board or commission, we are supposed to be making those decisions based on the information and the facts that are presented to us at a meeting. And then we're supposed to deliberate and make those decisions collectively as a board or commission at those meetings. Not based on information that we were provided outside of the meeting, but rather what's been presented to us. Now to confuse things a little bit, it's a little bit of an exception when it comes to the city council, the, the, the elected legislators, because as we all know, it's kind of, kind of the American way, right? To, to lobby your, uh, uh, your legislators. I mean, there's people that, that make careers out of lobbying uh, local, state, and, and federal legislatures. Nothing wrong with that. I don't mean to impugn anybody's uh, credibility or suggest anything's wrong with that. Um, but it's a little different when you're wearing your legislator's hat than when you are making these other types of approvals on, on variance requests, even rezonings, which are kind of a hybrid, uh, site plan approvals. So I think you want to certainly, you know, based on what, everything we've heard the last couple of hours, I mean, we, we, we don't want to be overly confrontational. We don't want to be overly aggressive. Uh, we certainly want to be accessible. But when you, you are approached, whether it be you know, somebody runs into you at the grocery store, or whether it's an email sent to you, um, uh, a 
telephone call or whatever, just remind the person firmly but politely that you need to you know, maintain your objectivity and you're going to make your decision. If they have something to say, they're invited to come to the meeting and make it there. Uh, so what do you do when these things happen? Because they will happen. The more controversial the issue, the more, and we've had you know, a few of them in the city with, with rezonings, and I know we've got a, a, a use variance uh, question coming up next week, and there will certainly be more. It's, you know, there's, always, there's always something on the, on the horizon. As soon as we move from one controversy, we jump to the next. So what do you do? Well, like I said, when you're approached by somebody, I think you try to, again, politely but firmly you know, remind them that you can't be discussing the case, either with, a, you know, with an interested party, certainly with, with the applicant. If they have something to say, they need to, to do it at the uh, meeting. If they want to submit something in writing, or if you receive emails, that's fine and dandy, as long as those get filed with the city. I would suggest that you have residents or applicants sending you, you know, emails or letters. Probably the best thing to do would be to uh, refer them to your staff liaison. Uh, for the people in this room, it's going to be primarily Amy Manson, uh, and to the city manager's office. That way, that information can be made part of the file, part of the record, can be distributed to everybody else and for due process purposes can be shared with the with the applicant as well okay because what we're trying to do here is have fair and objective decision making um, referring to staff is 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 important uh, also uh, utilize the chairperson i mean there's all sorts of of, of, of emails and things that we we get i think the chairperson for each board of commission should be part of that uh, in terms of making decisions as to what information should be shared, made part of perhaps the agenda packet so that everybody can see it, that sort of thing. So I you know, recognize we're real short on time, so I just wanted to give you just a real quick primer on, on uh, ex parte communications. I know there's a whole host of other questions and, and, and topics that we'll have to get into probably at another time about open meetings issues and email communications and that sort of thing, but um, general rule, ex parte communications, avoid them, okay? I understand the rule. Uh, what are the risks associated with having ex parte communications? Again, nothing criminal about it, but it does raise issues over impartiality and bias, primarily. And depending on the severity, even due process. I mean, it's, it's, it's a surefire way, or when you've got an applicant with an attorney who gets turned down on something, you've just given them a reason to go to court, that they can allege they didn't have procedural due process, that the board was biased, that the decision was not made on the information presented at a meeting, but rather members came in with preconceived notions or a decision was already made. You know, it, it's just one of those things that stinks to the high heavens with, you know, with, with the appearance of impropriety. Even council members, remember I mentioned it's kind of an exception for uh, when you're you know, elected officials <coughs> and you're wearing your, you know, your, your local legislator's hat. Nothing wrong with people talking to you, but you yourselves need to determine where your line is and you know where you are being responsive to your constituents where you're you're actively listening to them but you're stopping yourself short of prejudging a matter that's going to be coming before you um, or Again, not listening to the whole, not hearing those stories. Like, like most things, like we spent a couple of hours, you know, it, it, you know, very interesting presentation. How you can have a whole room of people who all see exactly the same thing, but walk away from it with different things. And we all know we, we see that as parts of our lives. So it's very important that we try to maintain that balance and impartiality. Any questions? Or additional questions, I should say. <clears throat> yes. So being on the planning commission, say we, we vote on something that, 
then has to go to council for their approval or denial. There's not an issue with somebody from council talking to us to say, you know, say it wasn't a unan unanimous vote. They want to talk to a couple of individuals that voted against it or for it, you know, to see what our thinking was that maybe wasn't expressed at the meeting. Well, there's nothing wrong with it, although I would suggest that the better course of action would be if there's going to be that kind of dialogue, it should be done at, at, the, meeting. at the open council meeting so that everybody can, can hear it and ask questions and not have these little sidebars. Okay. Again, that's when you're getting in, in, in depth discussions. Right. I mean, when it's just clarifying things like what did you mean, or even give another example. And again, I'll be, I'll be very quick, but I, I assume, or I'll ask the question, I, mean, I, I assume that occasionally, if not regularly, Zoning Board of Appeals members as well as planning commissioners will actually visit the sites where variance is being requested or site plan is being approved. Well, it's, you know, it's not unusual that you're going to run into the applicant or the owner. In fact, we really shouldn't be going onto their property with, you know, without making sure that we have their permission. Otherwise, we're, we're trespassers and we have to deal with the chief over here. But, uh, <laughs> but um, you know, that, that's one of the primary danger areas where you're, you're out there on the site with the applicant and he or she's going to want to tell you the whole story about how, you know, this is why I need that fair inch, and my mother-in-law's in a hard way, and we got to build this addition, and you know, blah, blah, blah. It's all right to be friendly, and it's certainly all right to get the clarification. You know, you're out there with your map and go, okay, now we're, you know, it's certainly all right to ask, now which is the lot line that, you know, we have the setback issue with, and that type of thing, but just, again, refrain, and there's ways to do it politely, but firmly, just refrain from discussing the merits, and you'll invite them to come to the, uh, the meeting, and they'll get a full and fair hearing, but just, you know, not get into, get into the merits of things. I mean, we don't want to be rude to people, we don't want to tell them, oh, yes, no talking to me, I don't want to talk to you. I mean, that certainly gives a, a negative impression. We just need to make sure people understand that we make our decisions at the meetings, at the open meetings, and we make them collectively. As individuals. Okay. Yeah. Real quick, um, can you review uh, the Open Meetings Act uh, minimum requirements? Is it, is it is it any three people on a body? Is it a, a quorum? Is it a majority? Um, how it's a, it's a little more than that. It used to be, you know, the, the popular thought. I'm going to say, like you know, ten or fifteen years ago, was as long as you didn't have a quorum of the particular board or commission president, you know, you were fine. The Open Meetings Act didn't apply to you. Well, the courts have chipped away at that. And what the courts have done more is they've looked at the function of that committee. I mean, if it's more than an advisory committee, I mean, this is a committee that's actually making decisions. I mean, I'll give you an example. If you had, for instance, a, a personnel committee of the city council, and we're interviewing uh, you know, for a new city manager, and you this was before you, I'm not <laughs> six months in. You, you weren't supposed to hear that, man. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Whoops. Horse is out of the barn now. Yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, just, just to give an example of, of that, if you were to form a personnel committee, and this committee was, was charged with the responsibility of, okay, we've got 50 applicants, pair that down to a short list of five and bring that back to the council. And even if there's only two or three members of council on that, that would be a problem because that would be a committee, less than a quorum, but they are actually deliberating and they are making governmental decisions that will affect public policy. Even if they can't take action on the spot because they don't have a quorum? They can't, but they are, in the sense that if you are taking, taking my example again, if you are ruling out applicants, you are making a decision. You're not leaving it to the council. Um, and by the way, that's not how our city manager <laughs> was hired. I just want, just want, I'm not suggesting it was anything wrong. That, that was not the process that, that was followed. But you occasionally can have that type of, of 
situation with, uh, you know, with, with boards and commissions. Um, I also want to rule out that, you know, chance meetings, social meetings, I mean, everybody just happens to run into each other at, uh, at the uh, holiday party, you know, that we just had. That's a chance social thing. I mean, we're not violating the Open Meetings Act by doing that. Um, you know, people just socializing together, um, not a problem, but we just always have to keep in mind, you know, if we're socializing, let's keep it social, okay? If we start talking about company business, then we've, you know, we've crossed that line and we're now into open, open meetings issues. So, not sure if I've answered your question real clearly, and that is, and that is because the law in this area is a distinct shade of gray. And yeah, it's, as it's I said, the courts do, right. the courts do, <coughs> are the way the legal process works, is courts interpret these laws for us, and it really takes years of specific fact situations before the law really evolves. Well, I'm thinking, of, I mean, it's not uncommon for planning commissioners to go look at a site like you, like you mentioned, but I, but I don't think it's probably a good idea for any of us to go together. To no, it's probably not a good idea, just like it's not a good idea, and again, I'm aware of our time, and I don't want to venture off into a different subject matter, but be real careful about um, uh, emails and social media. <coughs> it is so, so easy to communicate information that way, but when we start sending out emails to our fellow colleagues on boards and they're forwarding on to somebody else, and they're adding their reply. Next thing you know, we're having an electronic meeting. Okay, yeah. we need to be careful about that. That's you know, it's fine to send information out that everybody's getting and is being made part of the records. Be you know, also being submitted to Ms. Vanson for inclusion in the agenda or whatever. But uh, we really shouldn't be talking. Uh, outside of the meeting about you know, the merits of, of any particular cases. Uh, and as I said, I think your, your idea is a good one. I mean, there may occasionally, it may occasionally be appropriate to have a, uh, a group visit out to a site. Maybe yeah. we're having a demonstration, but when, if and when that happens, we're going to notice that yeah, I notice as that. a meeting. Yeah. But okay. other than that, you know, as, as you're getting ready for your, your, your meetings and you're going to uh, you know, visit the sites just so you're familiar with it when it comes to the meetings. Yeah, probably better to do that individually and not as a group. Very good. Thank you, John. Good? All right. Very good. Thank you all. I know we're up against a very hard deadline here. Okay. We're supposed to be out of here at 5 o'clock. So just suffice it to say thank you all for sharing your time and your talents. Uh, this has been a productive day uh, from 9 o'clock until now. And we want to continue the, the uh, skills and the goodwill that was generated today uh, to um, make important decisions going forward that we talked about earlier on today. So thank you all again. Is there a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn by Councilman Beckler, supported by Councilman Bencher. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed saying sign. Motion carried. Thank you all.